All right, appraisers, this is Brandon with Choice Valuation, and this video is meant to be kind of a deep dive into our new trend dashboard screen. So I'm going to show you exactly how it works, what it does, all the different things you can do in it. Okay, so first of all, what you're looking at is the 1004MC, and obviously we're, we're making this change in Spark and adding this screen because Fannie Mae has removed the requirement for the 1004MC, and we wanted to give you the appraiser the option of looking at your data in a different way so if you don't like looking at these three numbers you don't need them you don't want them and you also just want to see the analyses that you want to perform on each set of data or each feature set um, these each of these rows being a feature set in the 1004 mc so let's go ahead and switch over and show you i'm going to click on the trend dashboard here and now you can see that we have essentially these feature sets, again, it's like a row of the 1004MC. So there's the sale price, housing supply, days on market, seller concessions, and distressed properties. These are the five feature sets, is what we call them, that I have analyzed in Spark. But you can make them whatever you want. You can change the order. You can click this little hamburger icon, drag it around, make distressed properties go here. Maybe housing supply go there. However you want to do it. And... Spark will let you order it and analyze data in the order you want, and then also the feature sets that you want. So if you decide, you know what, I actually want to add in price ratio, you just click here where it says add feature set, choose price ratio, and it appears down there at the bottom. Again, you can change the order, put it wherever you want. You can click here to view edit analyses and customize it in here. I'll get into that in a minute. And if you decide there's a feature set that's being analyzed that you don't want to analyze, then you just click the X and remove it. And you also, as you're in here, you can choose whether you believe that the particular feature set is increasing, stable, declining, or even fluctuating. And I'm gonna remove price ratio because I don't want it there, but I'm gonna explain to you what I mean by fluctuating. So there's increasing, stable, and declining, and I'm sure that's what you're used to including, but there are gonna be times where you don't wanna mark increasing or declining. Maybe you don't wanna make upward or downward time adjustments because you don't think they're warranted, but you also don't really think that stable is the right word to use. So we give you this fourth option where you can use it as whatever you want. Now, this other option, which right here I have named as fluctuating, first of all, you can change that name to whatever you want. And second of all, it will be a neutral item. So as you can see here, we have negative items, neutral items, and positive items in the market. So a shortage in housing supply is a positive item because in general that means positive things about that particular market. Um, it's heading in a good direction. If there was an oversupply, that turns red, that means that's negative. And you can see the little uh, visual cue here for your market changed. And that is exactly what this is here. It's kind of a visual indicator of what your choices were in Spark. So you can see I've made two negative, two positive, and four neutral. So it's going straight up and down here. But if I change this back to a shortage, which it is in this case, then that goes a little bit over to the positive end because I have three positive choices, one negative and four neutral. And also, as you can see, when I hover over these choices here for shortage, imbalance and oversupply, you can see down below in blue. And what I'm talking about is right here where it says months of supply. And it's in blue when I hover over these, these um, choices. It highlights it in blue and it says months of supply 1.4. So based on this analysis of competing data over 12 months, the months of housing supply is 1.4. So I'm gonna mark shortage. Now, the analyses that show up here are all customizable by you, the appraiser. So let's go ahead and dive into that part. And by the way, you can see when I hover over um, each row, the some of the data regarding that analysis shows up right below the trend number. So the trend here is things are moving up at 0.6% per month, but it also shows you when you hover that the range is $130,000 to 2549 and the median sale price is 203250. And it shows median sale price because that's what I chose to analyze. And it tells you that right here, median sale price. I can click the little eyeball icon and go and look at the chart itself. And I can also choose to view comments, which I'll show you in a moment. But first, let's go in here and edit the analyses. So I'm going to click here where it says View Edit Analyses. Now, I have median price per square foot here. But let's just say you don't like price per square foot. What I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this little widget here, which is this chart and this analysis. And I'm going to click that to do that. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an analysis to this one. 
I want to analyze not only competing data for median price, but also my neighborhood data. So I click neighborhood. I'm going to choose median sale price. And by the way, you can see when I choose what to analyze, I have a whole bunch of choices of different things I can analyze. And they're all context sensitive, so they're all related to price in one way or another because I'm on the price feature set. So I'm going to choose median price. So now I've got my competing data and my neighborhood data. I'm going to check this box. And this box, it shows you when you hover over it. But what that box means is it means that that analysis is going to show up in the trend dashboard. So let me show you what I mean by that. I'm going to hit go back. So this right here is the trend dashboard. And this analysis now shows up here because I checked that box. If I didn't check that box, it would not be right here. This neighborhood data analysis showing plus 1.1%. I'm going to go and edit that analysis again. That's this one. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to clone that widget. And by the way, we have a whole bunch of other videos showing you how to customize the analysis, how to customize comments, all that kind of stuff. So check that out when you have time. I'm not going to get into a lot of detail there. But I cloned that analysis. It means I made a copy. I'm going to change this so I have like a, let's say, a quarterly bar chart. And I'm going to change it so it's going over 24 months instead of 12. So now I've got this. Now I can customize this further by clicking on this card and flipping it over and saying, you know what, for that competing analysis over 24 months, I want to change the trend line to a best fit. So I do that. And now I'm going to do the same for my neighborhood data. I'm going to choose the trend line as a best fit. Does that. All right, so now we've got these two charts and now, and you can see I have these two checked as well, the check boxes there, which means they are going to show up on this screen right here. So now I've got these and it says, it tells me they're grouped quarterly, whereas these two are scatter plots, so they're not grouped at all. So it doesn't say anything about grouping there. And I can see the trend right here. So I can customize that the way I want and then I can go in and say, okay, yeah, you know what? I think maybe this is increasing. I'm going to call it increasing, but you can make a quick but accurate decision based on exactly how you like to analyze data. And then the data will go into your work file. And you can also choose to include this information right in your actual report as an addenda as well. And just to show you one other item here, I'm going to choose to edit my analysis. And let's just turn this one off just so I can show you exactly what this looks like. And by the way, once you get this set up exactly how you want, how you want the comments to go in, by the way, you can customize the comments right here. Again, there's videos on that. I can choose to exclude REOs and short sales if I'd like to. You customize it, get everything set up how you want. And then once it's set up exactly how you want, you hit save layout and then Spark will remember that going forward. So you don't have to go in here and customize it every single time. Now remember, I unchecked this fourth analysis. So now when I go back to my widget screen, or I'm sorry, the trend dashboard screen, I should say, then you can see that fourth one is gone because I chose to exclude it. So now that analysis will go into my work file, that fourth analysis, but I excluded it from this screen. So if you're including this in your report to your client, they won't see that analysis if you don't want them to see it for one reason or another. Again, when you're looking at the screen, you can make your quick decision. You can click to look at the chart. The chart shows up, including the table of data down here. And that all, again, goes into your work file. And uh, that's kind of it. That's the basic premise is you set up the analyses. You go in and analyze data the way you want to, in the order you want to, and just analyzing the feature sets you want to analyze. Ex don't analyze, exclude the ones you don't want. You get a little visual cue of your market here based on your decisions as the appraiser. And then you also have comments. So when I click view comments, I can see the comments that are going into my report. And these again are all customizable by you. So you can choose to have comments go in based on whatever analyses you want. And then the last thing you're gonna wanna care about is when you hit export, how is it gonna load this data into your report? So I'm including the market data in my primary form. And by the way, that is, the primary form being this data right here, and it says primary form data. So I can click here and show you. It's talking about the one unit housing, so the low, high, and predominant price and age. And then it also shows the uh, page two range for your comparable listings and your comparable sales. So I've got that right here. And for a condo, obviously, that would be page three information. And that's that.
And then I also can decide whether I want to include that trend dashboard in a separate agenda in my report. So I'm going to turn that on and I'll show you what I mean by that. I can choose to turn on or off those comments completely and turn on or off charts. So let's just go ahead and load this into a report. I'll show you what it's going to look like. I know this video is getting long, but um, I'm just going to show you what this looks like in a report and then we will be done. Okay, uh, so I've got this screen up here. I'm going to just create a new report so you can see exactly what Spark's going to put in as if it were a blank report. I know most of you are probably going to cho choose to merge into an uh, open report, which in most cases is the best choice to make. But in my case, I'm just going to load it into an open report so you can see exactly what Spark will put in. All right, here's that report now. All mode is opening it up. Okay, so now let's go in and show you. So um, the parts you care about are we got the low, high, and predominant there. We got the market conditions uh, comments, and that's this right here, which again is customizable, and you can just choose to not include it at all. The trend dashboard, that's this market conditions analysis, so that's this. Again, you can customize how much data in, is in here and how much is not. And then also the charts, and those went in as you choose. And that's pretty much it. Uh, thank you, everybody, for watching. Oh, and the last thing is the work file. So you click work file, and it all the data will go into your work file as well. And that includes every analysis, every chart, all the comments, even stuff that you didn't want to go into your report. It's all going to go into your work file. And here is kind of what that looks like. So it puts in the trend dashboard, and then every single chart and piece of data, table of data, all of it goes in here. All right. Thanks again, everybody, for watching.